Greedo shot first and won the lady. Let's discuss tonight. Hey everyone, welcome back to another Lego-tastic episode of Empire Radio. I'm Jeremiah. I'm Drew. And we are back with Lego Star Wars Rebuild the Galaxy Part 3. Still no titles, kind of boring, but whatever. But we are back. We took a week off last week to do a book review, so if you haven't watched that or listened to that, go check that out. And for some reason... It's doing really good on YouTube right now. <laughs> Is it really? <laughs> it has like 152 views. Oh, geez. Like, which okay, that's more than our like, that's, that's more than our, our blind ranking episode. More than our oh, wow. bounty hunter top five with Grace. Like, maybe it's because I hated it. I saw like some comments are like mad at me for hating on it so much, something like that. So I don't know. What, like our last two book reviews have done really well. So maybe it's good that we we got a bunch of books planned on the horizon. So. Uh, speaking of books, we are doing the, uh, the first book of Phase 2 of the High Republic uh, later this month with Grace. Um, and then we'll do the new Mace Windu book next month. And then sometime after Skeleton Crew, we'll have another book. And then we'll have uh, your your book for Valentine's Day also. Heck yeah, that's coming up. <laughs> so we got a lot of books planned, uh, so that's exciting. But we should do a quick announcement uh, for the future, about the future of Empire Radio. So Drew got a new job, and so that's yep. changing our schedule a little bit. So um, starting in November. Which we're is gonna, now. We're in November. We're in October. Oh, you're right. Never mind. <laughs> um, but starting in November on Wednesdays, rather than doing it at night, we are doing it at probably about 9 a.m. on Wednesday mornings because Drew works second shift or whatever. So he's not available in the evening. So uh, grab your Wesley Andrews coffee and or tea and join True. us uh, in the mornings. And then uh, we're going to have to play it by ear come December when his schedule changes again. And we'll be doing skeleton crew stuff. So we'll keep Bear you with we'll, us. Yeah, we'll be, we'll let you guys know when we're doing live streams and stuff. But yep, Drew's moving on to bigger and better things in life. I hope so. <laughs> People have been saying that to me. I'm like, dude, I hope so. Or it's going to be like the worst decision <laughs> I, of your <yeah>. life. <laughs> or I get there and I hate everything about it. Bro, when it's like oh, yeah, mid January. <laughs> I do not want to talk about the weather. But I'm already yeah. stressing out about that. And if you are listening or watching this episode before this weekend, Sunday the 13th, uh, we are actually going to be recording on Sunday the 13th in the evening. We're doing our next blind ranking uh, episode. Every, We're doing that. So everyone knows about it. Should we do a live stream for it? We are doing a live stream. Oh, never mind. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's are. what I'm telling. <laughs> oh, okay. So please. if you're listening before Sunday the 13th, uh, go come join us for a live stream because it's blind ranking. So it's a very good one to participate in, play along as we're going along doing that. And so that's we're pre-recording that to be posted on the 23rd. So I, cause I need time to edit it. And so to keep every episode a week going, keeping the streak alive, um, that's what we're doing. So yeah, get excited so for that. I'm excited for us. that. It's going to be really fun. The four of us doing a blind ranking. I got all the categories made. We got some new ones. We got some mm. old ones. We got some mm. special ones that you're really going to like. But the, um, like the old ones aren't the same questions, though. No. So it's Categories are some are, same, some are different. It's so dope. It's going to be exciting. So go check that out. But those are the announcements. And so we might as well just jump into Lego Star Wars. So, Drew, you had a watch party with Miles last night. So how did you guys like this episode, part three? We liked it. It was fun. I there's a lot of like like for instance the thing that you mentioned in the beginning of the episode the whole Greedo thing I was dying <laughs> laughing like that that is the funniest thing ever like it's so good and it's hilarious and then like Miles was like laughing because I was laughing and he's like that was funny right like he asked me in the middle of the stream because <laughs> he doesn't understand but yeah it was 
there's a lot of funny moments in this episode, and I really like the concept. Like it's getting like better. I, I, I think it's really cool. Like the whole concept of like the Lego piece, like messing up the whole galaxy and like how Bob was telling them like it, it you can put it back to your old ways, but like now we found out that you can't. So like it'd be interesting if he figures out actually how to make it go back to the old ways. So I, I don't know. I think the concept of it is really cool. And my one of my favorite parts was when he went to all the Jedi and they're all the bad guys, but they're good guys now. It's, yeah. it's so funny. Like you have like can you imagine Jabba the Hutt as a force user? Like I wanna see him like do Yoda flips. <laughs> well there is a, a hut Jedi in the EU I know of. Yeah, so, but Java yeah. though. But it's so funny because it's like those little arms mm-hmm. trying to use a lightsaber. I've seen pictures. I don't know if it's like official art or if it's like just fan renderings, but gotcha. Kind of funny. Yeah. That's the whole thing about <laughs> when when he's like, "Yeah, I w- where's Luke? Where and Leia? Why didn't they come with us?" And he's like, "Oh, I had to tell them. I told them something. They might. They're gonna be." Probably later, and like you can see him talking to Vader, like all three of them, <laughs> like, like it's so funny. Yeah, I don't, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a f- fun episode, and like it's really cool that it's not canon because they can just do whatever they want, and it, there's no repercussions at all, which I think is fun about it. And like even how like the whole Jar Jar sequence, and he was like trying to fight, and then they made fun of people wanting. Dark Jar Jar as a character in the show, like or in in like the real, it was it's just funny. Like the whole thing was funny, so I I enjoyed it. I liked it. Yeah, I I really liked this episode. It was very dramatic at the end, like really intense. Like what, was, like mm-hmm. for kids, but like I I really liked it. And I'm like, it makes me want to think, like you know, in Rebels and in Ahsoka, we see the world between worlds. And, like, in Rebels, like, they say that you can control space and time through that because you can go through different portals and change things if you wanted to or try to. So it's, like, I wonder if they could actually do a a serious story about this. Like, someone, like, goes into a world between worlds and, like... Mess things up. Like, they could do that, like, you know, centuries or thousands of years before the Skywalker saga where some Jedi or Sith or something... Mm-hmm. discover the world between worlds because they built the temple they people knew about it like they knew how to get in and out of it so it's like i wonder if like well like that, the high republic era and somehow they actually made that stuff happen maybe like so it'd be cool like if they actually went down that thing where someone time traveled changed everything and then had to somehow figure out to put it back like that would be an interesting story but i don't know if star wars is ready for a <laughs> Something like that. I I I think the <laughs> the the fans that probably listen to this show or us, like we we know how to handle that. Like we could digest that properly and we we'd figure that out. But a casual fan would be so confused and like so annoyed then like not know what's going on. Like that's why you'd have to do it like thousands of years before. We're like we already know that it worked out. But True. like to see it happen. To, like, see how it works. Like, that would be really interesting to see, like, the, the temple built to do that. Like, that would be really cool. Yeah. Um. Or, you know, maybe in the future, past the Skywalker saga, things are changed and then that's get put back or something. Well, but, I've always said, like, if they ever wanted to get rid of episode 7, 8, and 9, they could totally just do that. Well, we had a whole episode on that yeah. way back in the day of, like... I think there was like, a, we did an episode like our first year of like the rumors that they were going to retcon mm-hmm. the, the sequel trilogy. And like, we agree, like, it wouldn't like be a full retcon. It'd be like, it happened, they went, they changed time and then started a different branch. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it's like still canon, but like you divert it away in a sense. But I don't know. That'd be cool if they could do something like that. But, Time travel in Star Wars, it's a very... Very muddy water. A lot, a lot of thin ice on that to do mm-hmm. it right, to make people happy. But overall, I like this episode. It's a lot of fun. Uh, but there's only one episode left, so it's like, we haven't watched it yet. So, so yeah, know. you guys are listening. Like, with this review, we'll say it again. Like, 
this is our review of this episode, and we've only watched the two ones prior to this. We don't know how it ends. So you guys might think we know. We don't we have no idea how this ends. So Yep. Just keep that in mind when you guys are listening to this. Yep. So we might as well just jump in scene by scene. So it just picks up. Picks up uh where it ended last week where all the different Sith arrive and uh they confront Sig and uh Bob and Yessi and you know Darth Dev comes and wants the, the cornerstone and all this jazz and so they're the Sith are about to the fight and kill him and uh Darth Dev is like give me the cornerstone and whatever he uses force lightning and is it he shocks Bob is that who he shocks I think so and he's able to get the the cornerstone and then off in the distance a pod racer comes over the ocean. And I totally forgot about Luke at this point. I'm like, <laughs> who is this guy? And then I'm like, oh, dang, it's Luke. So he, Luke, he comes in on his pod racer and like spins upside down and yoinks the cornerstone out of Darth Dev's hand. And they cra- he crashes. And then they, the, the, the good guys, they start running through the city. And then we see the, the Dark Falcon in the action. Do look so cool. They got to like Well, there's already a Lego set. Of the dark it. one? Yeah. And it comes with uh Darth Jar Jar. Really? Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> is it what's uh like how big is it? Is it like a small one or is it like It's like a smaller one. Yeah, it sounds like the giant one. Oh. But it would be cool if like you know, technically Ray and Chewie have the Falcon <laughs> after episode 9. Maybe she could make some modifications on it and get a new paint job. And it'll be yeah. It was cool to see the Falcon actually working. <laughs> I was like, are they is the dish gonna get knocked off some, at some point? Like yeah, when you, they actually use that as like a laser, I was like, oh, like this is what it's supposed to do. <laughs> like I said that in the live the watch party, I was like, oh, it's actually working properly. Like and it, even then, they're like, oh, that's a cool ship because it actually looks functional and it's cool. It doesn't look like it's breaking down. Right. So that, that was pretty funny. Like jab at the old other one essentially yep so the good guys are running through the town trying to escape from the dark falcon using the dish to shoot lasers at him and uh so darth dev he's dr- flying the ship and trying to kill him but uh they're just running through trying to figure out what to do and they there's like some spot it's like a a trash like dump hole thing on the conveyor belt until they they jump down there to escape, and there's just a bunch of trash and garbage and junk down there. I thought they were going to do another, like... Trash compactor thing? Trash compactor thing. Me too. Was, like, the worm guy. I forget what yeah. those things are called. So, it would have been cool if, like, the worm guy was down there, but he was, like, a good guy. <laughs> like, he helped He actually, like... Yeah, he, like, attacks Dark Jar Jar. <laughs> yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Or if there's, like... You know, there's just a button on the opposite wall that you just push and it stops the yeah. thing. <laughs> like they're cool freaking out as it's like squishing them and they're like, oh, and then they just go and push the button. Yeah, yep. that would have been dope. <laughs> um, but while they're down there, someone enters through the door and it's Darth Jar Jar. We finally get to see him. He's like, I'm going to be the one that brings a cornerstone to Darth Dev. I've been waiting for this, blah, blah, blah. And and it's in the original actor's voice too, yep, so it's Ahmad like Best. perfect. It's yep. perfect. It sounds so good. And then Jay Bob is looking like, all right, what am I gonna do? And apparently, there's like this whale skeleton like this hanging from the ceiling. I'm like, what? <laughs> like you didn't want to have like a speeder or like a messed up like destroyed X wing or something down there to like whatever. But it's right above Darth Jar Jar, and he just uses the force to drop the skeleton on Darth Jar Jar, and Darth Jar Jar is dead. And Jedi Bob is like, Darth Jar Jar, this is ridiculous. (laughs) (laughs) Trying to like, that's Disney, like, making fun of the fans for thinking that Darth Jar Jar is cool. Um, So I guess Disney had the final say on that. Um, But... Uh, so they're down there in the trash heap thing, and Luke is like, I'm coming with you guys. I have nothing left here, or whatever he says. And so 
cool. He is choosing to be a hero. He's leaving his uh, lavish pod racing life and joining the good guys. So they run, they escape, and they go into hyperspace. And they're just trying to figure out where to go, where to hide. They can't contact the rebels. They got all. They think they got all captured or missing or something. They don't know. Um. And so they're like, uh, Sig, the main character, is like, you know, there's all these Sith characters in this galaxy. Well, there has to be a bunch of Jedi, right? And we gotta go find them out. And so I think it was like, yes, he was like, knows where they are. And they go to this planet, and it's a, it's like a, a walker sand crawler. So it has like the mm-hmm. ATAT legs and then the sand crawler, the Jawa sand crawler. And that's where the last of the Jedi are hanging out. And like Drew mentioned earlier, it's all the villains, all the bad guys that are now good guys and they're, they're Jedi. So who do we got? We got Palpatine. We got Vader, who's all white. Jabba the Hutt, uh, Cad Bane, an IG droid. Uh, I'm guessing that's IG-88. Which is so we like so dumb because how do they use the force? Right. <laughs> when I saw that, I was like, "This is stupid." <laughs> uh, and surprisingly, they chose Lobot as one yeah. of them, which was kind of like of all the villains, like yeah, like no Thrawn, but Lobot, Lobot. Like I thought they would, they could have put Maul in there as a Jedi, but they chose no, to make him Lando. <laughs> Maul's Lando, bro. Which is weird, and then. <laughs> Which is weird. Like the other one was, I'm assuming it was Dooku. He, he never speaks, but yeah, it, like it is. Dooku. It looked like Dooku. Um, Which actually makes sense. <laughs> the only one. Because he was already a Jedi, so yeah. it's like, whatever. But yeah, so they're the last of the remaining Jedi in the galaxy. And I guess Darth Dev and all the Sith members, they wiped out all the, the Jedi in the galaxy. So I guess those guys are more dangerous than they seem to portray. So, um, yeah. So, but they're kind of like, we're in hiding. We're done. Like we failed. We're not doing anything more in the galaxy. We're kind of retired basically. Who is the, that girl Jedi? I don't think there was one. Yeah. That, the well, black they, girl that was talking. That was Jesse. No, it wasn't. Huh? No, yes, he was uh, not. She didn't go in the ship. I think that was the main, the one girl from episode nine. I forget her name. The the, the one that sits down with Lando at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Her? What makes you yeah. her? I think that was Yessie. No, Yessie didn't go in the ship. She stayed outside. And she, that girl was wearing all her Jedi, like, Jedi robes. Um, I'll pull it up right now. I'm pretty yeah. sure. But that's, that's like, a random, they, they would only put, like, known people, like, no one's I know, know that's why that. it was weird. But, but if you think, like, the, <laughs> the Sith, though, like, Rose is a Sith. <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> Bro, they do whatever they want. And that's how I, I was like, why is she? But I, at least Rose birthday. is someone that people would... <laughs> No, though, but like I have no idea what that girl's name is. I forgot her name, but yeah. I have no idea what her name is. Like she's in that movie for like five minutes. Like no one cares about her. A little uh, bit more than five minutes, but yeah. But well, Disney Plus has literally has the the weather report on there. Interesting. Interesting. Even though people who don't have electricity can't <laughs> can't watch it, see the weather report on Disney Plus. Okay. Um, but yeah, let me just find it. Yeah. So while well, they're talking, so um, they say like, well, so Sig and the team, they're like, well, we need to find where the the new temple is, where we can use the the cornerstone. So Palpatine's all like, oh, you have the cornerstone. Like he's kind of, it piques his interest and all that stuff. And he's like, so Sig's like, we need your help. So like find this temple. He's like, well, we can't do anything. It has to be you. 
but you know we can help you meditate yeah it's definitely not the same girl yeah jesse never went in so it's like it's that girl does she talk yeah, she's talk. She talks to her like the whole time. So is there, I have to look at the subtitles and see if yeah, like, I should see if there's subtitles for it, or check the credits at the for, end for who it was. But is there I IMDb? You well, think it, that would? it would be. But Will, are you here? Can you look this up for us? <laughs> who Who's the the girl Jedi in the 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 circle? So you got like Palpatine, Jedi Master Palpatine, Vader, you got Pel- uh, Jabba, all them. There's another girl on there and we don't know who it is. I thought it was Jesse. Drew says it's not. It's not. But hopefully Will, he's he's able to check that. If not, we'll figure it out. But anyway, uh, yes. So the, the Jedi are like, well, we can help you meditate, Sig, but that's it. And so, um, so during like this part of the thing, it goes to Darth Dev and some other Sith and their Sith are like, all right, well, they escaped. Sorry. What are we going to do? Blah, blah, blah. And Darth Kit Fisto starts talking back to Darth Dev and Darth Dev force lightnings. Yeah, it's her. She plays Jedi Java. Is that how? Jiva? Or what, what's that girl's name in it? It's that same girl. What's, she, what's the credit say? Are you looking at the credits or IMDb? IMDb. What does it say? It says it's, it's the same actor from um, uh, Rise of Skywalker. Playing the but same character, the- but it's a Jedi version. But what's the character's name? Java? How is it spelled? I think that's how you pronounce it. And I don't know. Uh, let me get to it. J-A-N-N-A-H. Jan? Oh, Jana? Jana? You said Java. Yeah, I don't know. Jana? But was that her? N- I don't remember. That I was- don't remember. I- that character was so... That's what I'm saying. What it- I saw her. Like, why is she here? Like, I don't even remember her name in the show. In the movie. I don't know. But anyway. Whatever. Um, Jana. Darth Dev says, well, we need to find the temple. Now, what was the name of the temple? Like, what do they call it? Cornerstone? Like, do they have a name for it? Is this the Time Temple? Or I can't remember what they call it. I don't remember. But he's like, well, we got to find it because that's where they're going to go anyway. That's where they have to bring the t- the cornerstone. And so... We'll go track that down. And he's like, but we don't got to worry because I have a spy among the ranks. I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. Who's a spy? Now, I don't think it's who you think it is from this episode. They make you think one thing. Really? You don't think it's... No, because that person wasn't there. He wasn't part of the group. They, they he just comes later. Yeah, but you don't think that's why he but, comes later? No, because he's like he's already in he's already a spy. But he's a whole oh. new group of people they never met before. So do you so have your prediction? I have my prediction. We'll we'll get there. Oh, okay. Okay. Um I'm not reading that deep into the show. Half the oh, time I gotta make sure Miles isn't running out the door <laughs> or climbing on me. So Yep. Uh so Wow, so so Sig he goes to try and to goes back to like the meditation. So he starts to try and meditate with all the other Jedi surrounding him. And so th- he's trying that. While this is happening, um Leia arrives and she's like flying in Kylo Ren's ship from the sequel trilogy. <laughs> she comes in, so she's still the leader of the Rebel Alliance. Um and who helped her get connected with this group of people? It was Maul helped him. I think Maul is the Ooh. is the spy. I could see that too because uh, then she, she was like, 
um, what does she say? She's like, Ma, I always knew you'd be a good guy. Like, she literally yeah. said those lines. So, mm-hmm. I think he's, he's I playing, like he's, he's like a spy that was in the cantina pretending to be like, I don't know if he was like part, did he I say don't know what he's trying part, to do, dude. Part, but was he a part of like the rebel alliance that she ran into or did he say he was or is he just like a random person? I think he's just a random person. So like, whatever. But somehow he goes and f- finds Leia. So I think he's the spy that Darth Dev says is connected to them. Because like, somehow he knows. Maybe he reported back. Oh yeah, yes he is. Just a success lady named Yessie. They're here with Jedi Bob and some kid. Like, he could report back to him. So that's my theory. You heard it here first, folks. Unless you've watched all the episodes, then <laughs> you already know. Uh, You're just laughing. Yep. Just write LOL in the chat for us. That's all. Yep. Uh, and so it goes back to Sig meditating, and he's having like a connection with the Force. He's having a vision of all these different planets that pop up. And he's trying to find the planet with this temple. And the temple is on Dagobah. Which kind of makes sense because he's like, oh, it's like a dark cave. Well, there is that crazy dark cave on Dagobah in the original trilogy. Well, and he's like, but now it's like a Jedi temple place. instead. And it seemed like he knew that that was Dagobah because of all the stories he used to tell. Probably, or just the connection in the forest told him. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. They took like the evil cave in Andegua and they flipped it over and make it a Jedi temple, which is kind of cool. Um, but we learned that Dagoba is controlled by the Sith. So like Darth Dev and his team have already been there and they have their own, it's like heavily guarded by star destroyers and stuff like that. Um, but during this vision, he's confronted by Darth Dev and he joins Darth Dev while his friends are in danger or whatever, or whatever. So he's like, oh, I don't know what's going to happen. Like, da, 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 da. And I think the Jedi are like, well, you still have a choice. Like, it's not a term, like, for sure. Like, you still have a choice, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, the Jedi are like, well, we're not going to help you. You got to go by yourself. And then Sig is like, you know, Jedi, my galaxy, they were good. They always brought hope. And my favorite line from the thing is Palpatine is like, the Jedi can strike back too, you know. <laughs> we're back, baby. Like, I thought it was kind of funny. Um, well, and then he's like, ultimate power. <laughs> like, he's still Later sad. on, yeah. <laughs> uh, when their ship isn't working. Um, but yes, so as this is happening, or when they're done, uh, a ship arrives, and it's Slave One. With some Simple. modification, we'll get into in a minute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so Slave One lands, and Leia's like, "Oh, this is my pilot that we need to like find this temple or whatever." Blah blah blah. And Han Solo starts coming off to Slave One, and he starts running to Leia. Leia starts running to him. And everyone's like, oh, even in this galaxy, Han and Leia are in love. And Han starts about to run and hug Leia, and Leia keeps running. And she runs in the arms of Greedo. <laughs> and everyone's like, Han, what do you mean? Like, How, how did you not get her? Like, what, what what's going on? He's like, Greedo sh- made a sh- shot, shot his shot first <laughs> and I, yeah. before I could. And so he, he got the girl, which is Really funny. Hilarious. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> and so the slave one, when it's, they take off, they board it, they take off. It's modified so it looks literally like Greedle. Uh, a Rodian. So it has yeah. like the ears, extra ears on, and it's green, and it just looks like it's a Rodian, so green Rodian, which is funny. And. Yes, he is flying the ship, which is because Leia and Luke. I'm trying. Okay, now I'm trying to think. Like now, because they split up. Leia and Luke 
stayed back because they Cause had to go do what again? They were just talking to their dad. Yeah, but they had a. They're supposed they're, they're, they're to go with the Jedi because the Jedi were supposed to go. The Jedi were going to meet, like, go with them too. Or but meet they're, with oh, them they're doing a separate. I don't remember what their mission was, dude. Because they didn't get to it because their ship breaks down, which we'll see. But, like, I forget. Like, they, so they split up, though. So they split up, but Leia was going to go with them. And then he was like, well, I think he's occupied right now. I, I had told them something. And then you can just see them as they're leaving that Luke and Leia are talking to Vader for the first time. And Vader's like, I'm who to you guys? Like, <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, when you have complicated family relationships and you need to talk things through, the best way to do that is to sit down in a circle or on a table with some hot beverages and let's talk things through. And coincidentally, our sponsor for tonight sells hot, well, the ingredients to make hot <laughs> beverages. So if you're having family problems and you need to talk them through, no better way than to use our sponsor for today, Wesley Andrews Coffee and Tea out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And you can just sit down and have a great chat over some hot beverages. So let's take a listen to this little commercial break. Hey everyone, Andrew here. I'm pleased to tell you that the sponsor of today's episode is Wesley Andrews Coffee and Tea. If you don't know anything about Wesley Andrews, you definitely should. They're an award-winning coffee roaster and shop in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and they make fantastic coffee. The awesome thing is that whether you live in the Twin Cities or not, you can get their coffee beans delivered straight to your door by ordering them online. They even have a subscription service that ensures you never run out of amazing coffee. If you've been looking for some new coffee to try or a way to elevate your normal coffee routine, now's your chance. Head over to wesleyandrews.cc, use the code Empire Radio, that's with a capital E and a capital R with no space at checkout, to get 15% off your first purchase of any bags of coffee or a coffee subscription. I can't think of a better deal. Get 15% off some great coffee, support a small business, and support your favorite Star Wars podcast. In the words of Emperor Palpatine, do it. Do it. Do it. All right. Well, the team, they arrive on Dagobah or at Dagobah and, you know, they can't, you know, land normally because, oh, they're going to get their energy signature and they're going to on the scanners and radar. So what is Jesse's plan? It's basically just turn the engines off free fall. There's no energy to be scanned. And then before they crash to turn it on, which I believe was, uh, from bad batch season three, right? No, it's, like, been, it's been in something before. Cause I it remember was bad that batch season three, I believe. I think it was, was it did Omega actually do that or something? Yeah, like her, I or, think so. Or something like that. So if you're it's in Star Wars, before. just turn your ship off and they can't scan you. So they're about to crash, but she's able to save the day and they, well, they do kind of crash a little bit, but they're good. Um, and so they're going, walking through the, the woods and forests and stuff on Dagobah and they come across a compound and it's a Sith compound, like a prison. And this is where, and they, they look in with their binocular space binoculars and they realize that members of the rebellion are there. And so the rebellion was captured and put in this prison. And so, Yes, he's like, well, this is my responsibility. Like, I got to free my friends and the rebellion. And Sig's like, all right, you do what you got to do. Me and Jedi Bob, we're going to go find the temple. We can, it's okay if we split up. We'll meet up later when we leave. And so, um, so we'll just, we'll just do finish the, the Yesi stuff and then we'll go to the, the Jedi stuff. So, Yesi, Han, and who else was it was the third one yes he han and was it luke no no Guido? Was it, huh 
Greedo? Was it Greedo? I can't remember. Well, whatever. She they go. She she, she throws a, a a grappling hook over to the wall. They climb up. They fall over and uh, Yoda and Grievous are there. <laughs> so they are rebel members, and Grievous is angry that Yessi screwed up everything and caused him to get taken or whatever. And so they're arguing, blah, blah, blah. But she's like, well, it doesn't matter. I'm here to rescue you. We got to go, blah, blah, blah. And then Han says, not so fast. And he shoots a flare in the air. And sorry, guys, I'm turning you in. Darth Dev will pay me a lot for this, blah, blah, blah. And he's called a scoundrel. And so even in this galaxy, Han is Han. Even, you know... Even when he had a, a wife and kid, he couldn't grow up in the in canon. He ran away and abandoned his family. He's still a scoundrel. But even here, when people's roles reverse and stuff, he's still a scoundrel. So Han will be Han, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so all the Admiral Akbar clones come out and it's a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> and they get captured. So that's that. But on the, another location on the planet, you got Sig and Darth or uh, Jedi Bob. They're going along to try and find a temple. They find the cave that he saw in his vision. He's trying to like use the Sig is trying to use the force to like sense everything. And he's like, "There's something underground." He's like, what should I do? And he says that to Jedi Bob. And he's like, he just looks at him. Like, so he's like, oh, yeah, use the force. Sorry. <laughs> and so then he uses, he focuses on what's underground and it starts to lift out of the ground. And it's the Jedi Temple from Coruscant, but it's on Dagobah. And mm -hmm. it's like black rather than tan or whatever sand color that it is on Coruscant. And so they enter in and they're walking through and they find the spot on the wall where Sig needs to put the cornerstone, but it's not that easy. Darth Dev arrives. He's like, I made it here too, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, Jedi Bob has been lying to you. He hasn't been telling you the truth. And Sig's like, what do you mean? And he's like... Darth Dev is just kind of like, you know, he didn't tell you to, you can't save your family or whatever, but and it's like, like, no, Jedi Bob said that I can restore the galaxy and stuff like that. And Jedi Bob confesses that he lied, that you can't fix it. You can't return back because he made the same mistake that Sig did. And when in his own, he says, in my galaxy, I took the cornerstone and it destroyed my galaxy and and was reborn as the galaxy that you came from, Sig. And there's nothing you, you can do to return back to mine. There's nothing you can do to return back to yours. But it's the job of the person with the cornerstone to protect the temple so that it doesn't get screwed up again, which is a very interesting, a cool concept. Like, you lost your family, everything you know, and so the the way to like re, you know, to better yourself is to like stop it from happening again by protecting it and the temple that's been reborn. And so I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I liked it. I thought it was pretty cool. I'm curious on how they're gonna go about it. Um, by the way, it was Greedo that went with them. Okay. So it was yeah. those three. So then this just creates a bunch of tension between the three of them and. Sig doesn't know what to believe because he can't trust Bob anymore because he lied. But he doesn't want to trust Dev because he's a Sith Lord and evil. And but Darth Dev is like, but Sig, with your ability to the force build and my ability to the force destroy, like we could create this galaxy to however we want it to be. But all you gotta do is just give me. The, corner the, the cornerstone and um, 
in this conflict, like Darth Dev is the like force lightning on Sig, but then Servo, the gonk droid, jumps in the way and sacrifices himself to save Sig, and he gets destroyed. And Darth Dev is like, you just got to join me, blah, blah, blah. Like, I have plans. And Sig realizes he can't trust Darth or uh, Jedi Bob anymore. So he gives a stone to Darth Dev. And Darth Dev walks towards the camera with the smirk on his face. Like, I got plans for this galaxy. And that's it. Yep. The plot thickens. It's getting exciting. I don't know how they're going to do this in one episode. I don't know. Do you think that he's going to find a way to restore his own galaxy? Or is he going to realize that by restoring his galaxy, he's destroying this galaxy? No, he has to, though. <laughs> well, he has to what? What is he going to do? He has to bring it back to the old one. He's got to figure out how to make it... The last one. So you think he's going to sacrifice the lives of everyone in this new galaxy to go back to his? Yeah. I don't think you're going to do that. I think he's going to stay and keep it the way is and protect the temple. So be. then our, our galaxy is not going to be a thing? Yeah. Interesting. It has to be because they're not going to like <laughs> have the good guy – Destroy an entire galaxy of lives. Yeah. It's, it's Disney for kids. <laughs> They're not going to make the good guys do something like that, I don't think. But we won't know. We'll have to watch it uh, for next week. So. So yeah. do you think Maul was. Yeah, I mean, I'm down for that. He's, Makes he's, sense. He's just the, the mole, the spy. I think. I think that would make sense because it'd just be like Han's just a sneaky Han doing it off of himself. He he had his own motivations. Like right. I, he didn't have motivations from anyone else. He just wanted Leia. Right. So that would make sense. So, all right. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's all we have planned for this episode for the breakdown. But we have everyone's favorite time of every episode, voicemail time. So let's transition over. All right. Well, we only have one voicemail tonight. Oh, come on, but guys. What are you doing? It's from the coup d'etat verse. And so Garrett is back. So last week he left us off where he infiltrated the... It's kind of like very similar to <laughs> events of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he's getting some inf uh, inspiration. I don't know. I don't want to call him out for, for copyright. Or maybe they're doing it to plagiarism. him. Um, but... Last week, he infiltrated, a, I believe it was a First Order base, and where he has all of his friends and allies, they were all captured and imprisoned, and he's, he was able to, like, send all the troopers out, like, distract them or something, so he was able to get in, everyone got armed, and they was waiting for the, the, the troopers to, oh, there he is, <laughs> Gakman820, he's listening, mm -hmm. uh, he's did a little, like, sweat smelly face, so... Maybe he, we caught him. I don't know. <laughs> but he's all, everyone's armed, ready for the troopers to return. So this is where we pick up. So let's take a listen to the coup d'etat verse. Hey, Empire Radio. It's Garrett. The sun set on the east side of the outpost with a slight haze surrounding us. Birds chirping and frogs croaking. Until suddenly they stopped. All was silent for a moment until we heard the distant sound of ATSTs. Everyone is armed and prepared for what's to come. We knew it. They knew it. There would only be one side left at the end of this battle. The crackling of leaves under the troopers' feet came to an audible level. Then everything went silent. Attack! yelled the First Order Lieutenant. The ATSCs began firing out their defenses, and the whole squad of troopers were charging the base. Luckily, everyone knew their jobs. Turrets would target the ATSCs, and the others would target the infantry. I was positioned on the roof of the control tower, armed with the DL-19D First Order Heavy Blaster Rifle, overlooking the First Order's attack force. I saw the lieutenant point at a group of troopers and signal them to go around the back of the compound, but little do they know there's a fun surprise for them when they open that door. 
One of our turrets took out an ATST, but the other one was targeting the power relays to shut down the laser gate. A large explosion went off behind us, which means the surprise had been delivered. I could see the panic on the lieutenant's face when he couldn't get a hold of that group of troopers on comms, and I knew then we were going to win. But the only other thing we needed was to capture the lieutenant. I'll continue the story next week, but until then, if you could own a business in the Star Wars universe, what would it be? I would either run a pod racing team or own a gambling parlor that does some business for the Crimson Dawn on the side. Ooh. All right, cool, cool. Thank you, Garrett. So, a big battle. You, you set the mood with, like, the haze and, like, the birds and frogs and stuff. And then I, I, I was just – it was so immersive. Like, I was just, like mm – -hmm. It was so pretty it was good cool. writing. Yep. So, big battle, but it's down to the final chapter of, like, guy capture the lieutenant, the head guy, lead in this battalion of First Order Troopers. So, question is, though, if we could have a business in the Star Wars universe, what would it be? I would own the cantina. <laughs> a cantina owner? <laughs> yeah. But I would try to own the cantina. The Tatooine, the Mos Eisley mm -hmm. cantina. I think that would be really cool. You get a lot of cool, interesting characters coming in and out of there. You do some side hustles under the bar, you know what I mean? Like, I think that would be kind of cool. Illegal activity is kind of mm, cool. Maybe, okay. maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> would you allow droids? I would. I don't know. I'm Someone pretty... has to serve, and it's a lot cheaper than hiring people. You're, you're kind of progressive for. Uh, I know, guy but to run I gotta, evil... I gotta cut. I gotta cut payroll somehow, and hiring one person to make sure all so the so Drew is not going to pay his workers fairly. <laughs> Hire... <laughs> no, I didn't say that. I said hiring one person to fix the droids is cheaper than to hire people instead of droids. So. Or you could just And we know in the Mandoverse they are they're back in they're allowed in there, so that is true. So I don't know, what would I want to do in the Star Wars universe? I don't know. Cause there's like so many jobs that exist in the Star Wars universe that don't exist like here. So it's like is there like a Star Wars specific job that'd be cool to do? So many. Know. Like I don't know. I don't know. I'd probably just I feel work like you at would a like... restaurant, <laughs> a bakery with Dex. Work with Dex. That would yeah. be cool. Or, um, or like, I can see you like working at like the organizing all like the books and stuff in the Jedi Temple. Well, we did in uh, the Inquisitor Rise of the Red Blade review. Like, we learned that the temp Jedi Temple hires non-jedi workers uh mm -hmm. civilian workers to work in there and so that'd be cool to work in the jedi temple but like he says you say own like what business would you own or something like that yeah so i don't own, own the, the the rental rights of the cafeteria <laughs> like it's like at the jedi temple because like you'd have to like make meals that are workable for different species of true people. like you can't just they definitely probably hire out someone to do that. So, unless unless everyone just eats those little those sticks <laughs> sticks that those are uh, they're like rice here on Earth, where everyone eats rice because it's just yeah. a neutral thing. Maybe that's what every species can eat. Or those beef sticks, those jerky sticks, <laughs> little whatever those sticks are. I feel like they're just like crackers, but like protein crackers or something. I don't know. That'd be kind of cool. All right, well, that's it. This is like one of our shortest episodes ever. So we just go over some. Uh, it's almost as short as our watch, my and Miles watch party. <laughs> we can go over some socials and we can get out of here quick. So if you want to get connected to Empire Radio, all you got to do is go in the description of wherever you're listening, click the links at co slash Empire Radio, links spelt with two eyes, and it's a landing page for everything Empire Radio. So. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook. You can follow us on YouTube. Uh, follow us on Twitch for live streams. Join the Discord. Send your own voicemail. It'll be a lot of fun. We, like, you know, it's been a struggle. Like, I always have to remind everyone every week on Wednesdays, hey, we haven't gotten any voicemail. Send one in to keep the streak alive. Garrett, he's doing his thing. But, like, we only had one this week. Like, if he forgot to do it, the streak of almost – we're coming up on 
four year streak. <laughs> like, <laughs> so like, come on, guys. We love to hear from you. If you've never sent one in, right now, pause yeah. the episode, click the link, send in a voicemail. It's super easy. You don't gotta sign up. You don't gotta do anything. You just gotta push record and push stop, and then push send. That's all you gotta do. Also, a reminder, real quick, this is not about that, but if you made it this far, Twin Cities Con, if you oh, guys are in the Twin yeah. Cities during Twin Cities Con, make sure you guys come out, and on Saturday, we'll be there, me and Jeremiah, Yep, November, walking around. November 9th, September, or November 9th, which is a Saturday, go check us out there. Uh, Hayden Christensen will be there, Ian McDermott will be there, I'm Probably not going to put the money out to go see them, but I'm definitely going to go see Timothy Zahn and Mark Thompson. That'd yeah. be cool to see them. So we'd love to see you if you are there too. I'll be wearing my Empire Radio shirt. So Definitely come say me. hi. Come hang out with us. Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll if we get a bunch of group, we can, we can split the cost to go Dude, get a group photo. That would be dope. With all of us? Yeah, like, come out. If it's like, because the rumor was it was three hundred dollars. I don't know if it's true, but like yeah, if ten of us were able to get up and we each paid thirty bucks to get Worth a group photo, just a group photo with them, that would that would be really cool. Like That'd a little fun. mini Empire Radio Con with <laughs> with Hayden Christensen hanging out with us. If you guys are co- if you guys come and you have Empire Radio shirts, that would be the day to wear them. There's only a handful of you out there that have Empire Radio shirts, true. so. You'd be the real OGs. Trying, yep. trying to, yeah, if you guys are in Wisconsin, Iowa, anywhere in the Midwest, honestly, this is a kind of come to. Because it, it's getting bigger and bigger every year. Good. So, like. There's a lot of good names out there. And it's not super expensive to go into if you're paying for it. So We got media passes. So oh, we, were not, we don't have to pay anything. We don't have to, to pay anything. But <laughs> we're, we're a big deal. We're, 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 mm-hmm. we're, we're getting in for free. So hopefully... 2026 sour celebration we can get press passes and then i go to that for free that'd be really cool that would be dope anyways yep. yeah come out to that yep but yeah join the discord too let us know if you're coming you can uh just join the discord or use the fan email also in the links description thing uh if you let us know if you're coming and we'd love to see you there so and then also finally we're part of needlessly nerdy.com which is an entertainment network that we're part of so if you like other nerdy content like podcasts and stuff that cover up Things other than Star Wars, go check them out as well. Anything else, Drew? No, that's it. All right, cool, cool. Well, you've been listening to another Lego Tastic episode of Empire Radio. I'm Jeremiah. I'm Drew. And may the Force be with you. Always. Always.